Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our third information session we've hosted this weekend. I'm Carly Fagan and I'm an admissions counselor here at MBU. I wish we could have you on campus, but I'm so glad we're able to connect virtually. Don't forget, if you haven't already, you have until June 1st to complete your mission at MBU and pay your deposit. Life at MBU is brought to you today by our Office of Student Engagement. In this session, you will hear from our Vice President of Student Engagement, Dr. Jeffries, Tracy Heiner, Director of Dining Services, Associate Vice President of Student Engagement, Dr. Jones, as well as the Director of First Year Experience and Student Support, Dr. Britton, and Director of Residence Life and Housing, Sarah Martin. Dr. Jeffries, would you like to start our Life of, at MBU session off today? Yes, thank you very much. Um, again, I'd like to welcome you to um, a, 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 a deeper look into um, Mary Baldwin University. Uh, again, I am Dr. Ernest Jeffries, Vice President of Student Engagement. And in Student Engagement, we're 10 departments that pretty much cover everything uh, that students do outside of the classroom. Um, we're here to support students uh, in various ways. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I would like to highlight today, you know, the question may be, you know, what do you do outside of the classroom at Mary Baldwin University? Uh, I, I'm happy to say today that we have a myriad of, of experiences that are designed for students um, to help them to develop, to help them to grow, um, you know, to help them develop their life skills and professional skills. Um, you know, at MBU, um, we have over 60 uh, student organizations and clubs um, that range from uh, things that are associated with academic areas such as social work, um, math club, health club, uh, and the like. Um, you know, we have several clubs that that face towards uh, arts and performance, like our Mary Baldwin University Choir. Um, we have civic engagement organizations, engagement uh, organizations that are turn towards uh, cultural awareness, such as the African Student Collective and Latinas Unitas. Um, and we also have uh, organizations that, um, that um, you know, things like our Baldwin Programming Board that are uh, responsible for a lot of the fun activities uh, that students are engaged in on campus. We have our SGA, uh, our RHA Residence Hall Association, um, just to name a few. And we are also, you know, let you know that we are also open to, to where if students don't see anything uh, organizationally that they are um, interested in uh, of supporting students to start uh, organizations on campus um, once they get here. Uh, so we are uh, very, very excited, um, you know, about you all and about you all being uh, a part of the Mary Baldwin University family. Now, um, you can change the slide, please. I want to talk a bit uh, about safety and security uh, here at Mary Baldwin University. We feel that we are a very, very safe campus. You know, we are located in a very low crime area uh, in the state of Virginia. Uh, you know, we have been ranked uh, by, this, by stateuniversity.com as the number five safest uh, school in Virginia. There are a few things that we do have in place that helps us ensure uh, our students' safety on campus. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the Baldwin Alert Messaging System, the BAM system. This system is in place uh, as a, uh, a notification system for our students and their parents uh, when things of epic precaution happen on campus or when there's an emergency or something that's very, very important that we need to get communication out about. Um, you know, that those uh, notifications come through text message, through email messages as well. Um, we also have uh, a system uh, of security escorts available here on campus where our safety and security officers will uh, provide those escorts late night uh, for students across campus. Um, and also want to say, too, that um, we do have um, safety and security officers on, uh, on um, duty 24-7, 365 days, 
uh, a year here at Mary Baldwin, and they are supported by our local uh, Stanton Police Department. Um, one other thing that we have in place on campus for safety's sake is that we do have emergency call boxes placed in strategic, um, strategic um, places across our campus. Um, most are in front of residence halls and then we do have um, call boxes in other places near our parking lots. But one thing that we instituted last year that that even um, that we're very, very, very happy about that gives us even more coverage beyond just call boxes is what we call the Mary Baldwin Campus Shield. Uh, the Campus Shield program is an app that students can download on their phones and those apps uh, help us if a student needs something or they're in trouble, if they slide that app to the emergency section, um, you know, we will be able to uh, ping their location down to the building and the floor of the building and then respond to whatever that emergency is. Um, we have someone monitoring those calls 24-7 uh, and also they they will then tie that into uh, our Stanton PD if there are 911 calls uh, that are needed. And one thing that we like about it also, uh, it works on campus, but if students go off campus, then it will go directly to the 911 calls in their area. So it covers our students um, basically wherever they they find themselves. So, you know, again, we we feel very, very good about uh, how safe our campus is and how we can provide things to ensure uh, the safety of our students. Uh, next slide, please. We're also um, very, very excited about our athletic programs here at Mary Baldwin University. Um, right now, we have grown the athletic department to eight women's sports and six men's sports. Um, our new sport next year that will be coming online is men's basketball. Uh, this year, um, our men's baseball came online uh, as a club sport. Um, we also uh, have, are very, very proud of where our athletic teams are, are headed. Uh, this year, our women's basketball team for the second year in a row uh, made the playoffs for the USA South Division III Conference. And our men's soccer program, which in their first year of NCAA play, uh, also had a playoff berth um, for our conference. And we're very, very um, excited about where we're headed um, with our athletic programs. And all of these things are here. Uh, for you to participate in. Uh, and we're just looking forward uh, to seeing you all here uh, in the very, very near future. And now I want to turn this over to Mr. Tracy Heiner, uh, who is our Director of Dining Services. Thank you, Dr. Jeffries. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to be here. It's my privilege and also on behalf of the wonderful team that I work with. Um, I'm excited to share about things that we've implemented thus far and things that's coming up this year. Um, we've got two dining locations, Hunt Dining Hall and University Cafe. Um, I'm excited to share too that we're in the process of, of a major remodel in Hunt Dining Hall that's going to uh, make the building look great and also help us with our service. Um, in Hunt Dining Hall, we have set meal periods, but we do offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Uh, there's five food bar options every meal, and, and each, each bar always includes a vegetarian and, and generally also a vegan option as well. Um, we have green to-go containers so that you can take food out in the dining hall and to assist folks in identifying our food we do label our food as vegetarian vegan and or gluten-free um, in the university cafe it opens up at 8 a.m and doesn't close until 10 p.m uh, we also have a late night meal period in the cafe that runs uh, friday and saturday from 7 p.m to uh, midnight um, to support all of our programs and, and our students' needs as far as their schedules go. So the cafe never closes. You always have a place to, uh, to get your food. The cafe um, can be an eat-in or a carry-out. We also offer Starbucks in the cafe. 
Um, it's basically uh, you build your sandwich or your salad to order and then you can customize your sides as well. Um, and with those two programs, uh, in terms of sustainability, 55% of our food and beverages purchased locally, including produce, uh, beef, chicken, all of our dairy, our bread. Um, we compost in the dining hall. And of course, as I said, we have the reusable containers to take food out in the dining hall. Um, for dietary restrictions and requests, uh, we do have a, a dietitian on campus that's available to coach and counsel students individually. Um, and then the, in the dining hall, as well as the cafe, we've got a wonderful staff that's there to support anybody that if for some reason they don't find something that they like, uh, they can ask anybody on staff and they'll prepare them a meal. I like to say like at home, our kitchen is your kitchen. Um, meal plan options. Uh, we've added, uh, before I go to meal plan options, um, we've also uh, expanded our service in both the dining hall and the cafe and part of that is adding breakfast on Saturday and Sunday in the dining hall and then also in the cafe, the late night meal period went from 7 to 10 to 7 to midnight. So again, to support our students. So meal plan options, uh, we've got four different meal plans to choose from. We have an ultimate unlimited, which means that you can swipe as, as often as you want um, at either the cafe or hunt. And we also have a fixed 21 that ensures that you have a meal every meal period. And those two meal plans are, are available to freshmen. And then to upperclassmen, we also have available a flex 16 that allows you to swipe as often as you want in any given meal period and also Flex Senior 12. And every meal plan includes uh, Flex dollars that you can use to purchase retail items in the cafe or also get an extra meal and hunt or pay for a guest as well. So I'd like to pass it off to our Associate VP of Student Engagement, Dr. Darren Jones. Everybody, welcome. Uh, first off, uh, congratulations. We are so excited about the prospect of you joining the Mary Baldwin family. Um, so I'm just very excited to be able to spend this time with you all to talk about uh, the first year at Mary Baldwin. We are fully aware that um, there are a lot of options um, around the country um, and there are specific elements about the Mary Baldwin uh, environment that really makes us distinct and very attractive as an institution of higher learning. And one of those things is the intimate environment that we have. We pride ourselves in being a very student-centered, and not only student-centered, but people-centered institution where we really have a full embrace um, of everybody because we're coming from different backgrounds. We want to make sure that everybody has an equal chance of success. Um, and one thing about that is because we have such an intimate environment, we're able to get to know students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You won't be a number when you come to Mary Baldwin. You will be the individual and all the talents that you bring to us. So we really want to understand who you are, what are your goals, what are your fears, and how can we support you to get to the place that you want to be. Um, and one unique space that we occupy when it comes down to the first year experience is how we approach the positivity when it comes down to accomplishing your goals and overcoming challenges that you may or may not encounter when you transition into your first year of college. This is a very transformative experience and a transition from high school to your first year can present with some challenges. Uh, so one of the things that we have shifted our approach is how do we front load all of the positivity and front load all of the talents that you bring to us so that you can channel it into success. Uh, and so we have adopted a strengths-based approach. And what that basically means is as we go through uni you know, universal challenges, it's easy to think about um, ourselves in a negative light. You know, these are the things that I know I'm going to struggle with. These are the things that I'm afraid of. Um, and sometimes it can present um, a lot of anxiety. So you're nervous about the transition, so on and so forth. And one thing that we make sure all of our students are um, aware of is that you are more than enough. Um, and a part of that is learning about what are your strengths, right? 
Um, I, a part of our mission is to empower leaders. And it's one thing to sh tell you that you can and that you will, but it's another thing to show you how and why you exhibit um, the positive qualities and why you've exhibited the, the amount of success that you've had um, thus far. And so strengths is what we piloted this previous year. And essentially what it does is it takes a lot of information from an online assessment um, and it gives you your top five strengths. Now, the beauty of that is many times we know if we don't do well at something, why that is. But if we flip it and we exhibit success, a lot of times we don't give ourselves credit for what we do right. Um, and so this is a way for us to front load that positive message um, and also to show you why you would be successful here at Mary Baldwin. So each student um, receives a profile um, of their top five strengths and it's out of 34. Um, and it's very, very accurate. We had all of our first year students take it this previous year. We also had a lot of our faculty take it. So your advisors would have taken it as well. And it gives a deeper insight to how you operate. Um, We've gotten great reviews uh, with how we rolled it out this previous year. And I put some quotes from students um, who went through the program. And as you can see, the first one, learning, learning your strengths will help you to learn more about yourself and why you do what you do and what things can help to make you better and the reasoning behind it. Um, so the more you understand about yourself and the talents that you bring, the more you can apply to the challenges that you may experience when you're here in our first year. And I will reiterate, we have a full embrace, a holistic um, approach to student support to where if you need something, someone is there and accessible. So we do take pride in that. And I wanted to highlight the, the, the last quote down there and they say, they will drill it into you, prepare. Um, and so I laugh when I see that all the time because um, it's something that we take pride in, right? Um, it's something that we want students to understand. And the reason why we drill it into you because we realize the value of really thinking positively about yourself and recognizing what natural talents that you have that once you invest in them, success is imminent. Um, and so uh, along with our approach, there's a lot of experiences that are created as touch points throughout the year, um, opportunities for you to engage with faculty, staff, and your peers around these topics, um, but also topics that get you to learn about the institution on a deeper level. Uh, and so I'm going to pass it off to Dr. Britton, who is going to give you a more insight on first year experience at student support, which she can tell you about some of those programs. So again, thank you so much, and we hope that you will be joining us this fall. Well, thank you, and thank you for taking the time, uh, everyone, for being here on a Sunday afternoon. So we do want you to feel um, comfortable when you come to Mary Baldwin. We want you to know about Mary Baldwin. We want you to know about yourself and how integral you are into this institution. So we've developed here in first year experience several different activities and programs that help you uh, make that transition successful so that you can be a successful college student and graduate Mary Baldwin. So the first one is new student days. And even though, of course, uh, we're looking at making new student days virtual, it doesn't mean that it doesn't contain everything that you'll need to know about Mary Baldwin and what you need to deal with when you get here. So we're going to take what you would normally have in a day into a virtual uh, communication stance and, and that will help you kind of gain um, things about registration, uh, pre-registration and financial aid, um, things about the, the residence halls. Uh, so it will give you that kind of close up look, even though it's virtual, it will still give you that close up look to help you get through the summer and to be excited about coming in here. And then orientation week is a time where students will come and to really kind of delve into all of the resources and programs that are available at Mary Baldwin. Uh, as Dr. Jones says that that we are definitely people centered and we want not only you, but your parents and your families to feel good about making that decision about coming here. And so that's what that week is all about is really understanding everything that we're able to provide to you. Um, but it's also a time for you to start making those friends and developing the relationships that you develop during the new student days. Um, it's time to kind of check out different things, you know, such as different activities and clubs and, and really get to know the campus and get to know Stanton. 
um, because they're an integral part of this institution's success. The next thing that we do, and, and, and one of the things that's really important, it's what's really exciting about this, the, uh, Mary Baldwin, is our, our integral connection with academic affairs. And, and you will see that through MBU 101. So student engagement and academic affairs came together to revamp MBU 101 so that you will have a successful first semester. And it's a class that every student takes, um, but we all develop the curriculum together um, in, in order for you to be able to be successful and to transition to college. And then to, uh, not only in that first semester, but also in terms of that first year and going forward. We're also looking that we brought up last year and we're continuing is that first year common read. And so it is a time where all freshmen come together to read a particular book that can deal with uh, a myriad of ideas. It could be dealing with social justice, it could be good to uh, deal with environmental science, but it's going to based, be based on our, our year's theme that uh, we have at Mary Baldwin. Each year, the Spencer Center puts out a, a common theme, and a lot of the activities that we do throughout the year are based on that theme. And so that first year common read is uh, similar to that. Uh, we don't want to leave out the families. And so in the, in the mid-October, we have families coming back to, uh, to deal with family weekend and to enjoy that time to check up on you as a student, but also to kind of feel like, you know, that they've made the right choice allowing you to come to Mary Baldwin. Um, and it's a good time to connect and reconnect. It's a good time for families to meet each other, uh, to give each other support. We do have uh, one particular program called RISE program, which started last year and we're continuing. And that is for students who do not have what we call an affinity group. And so that's being part of the VWIL program or the Mary Baldwin College of Women, um, the Ida B. Wills program. If they are not connected with a particular program right away, we want them to be connected. We want them to bond together uh, with students. And so we developed a RISE program so students are able to be part of that program. And then of course, uh, throughout the year, it's not just the beginning part of, of your experience at Mary Baldwin, it is, it is constant. And so our office is, is strategic in providing that student support throughout the year, but also even as you go on and you move into your major advisors and you move on to um, other folks that, that can help you, we're always there and we're always gonna be there for you. And just, just to give you an example, you know, in this uncertain times when our students had to return home, many of our students didn't have internet uh, access. And so it was our office that worked with the professors to develop different ways to strategize different ways to provide that work to um, uh, looking at different different strategies in terms of, of getting that work to the students. And we were integral in that part. And so we're there for you. Uh, you know, our, our campus safety is there you three, 365 days a year. So are we. We're there for you, giving you support because we want you to succeed and we want you to succeed in whatever uh, career that you want to go into. And so our office starts and finishes with that. And so I'd like to continue on with uh, presenting going, excuse me, with uh, presenting the next aspect and that is with housing and Sarah. Um, and Sarah Martin will take it away. Sorry, uh, thank you so much, Joy. I really appreciate that. Um, so of course, one of the key pieces is um, where you're gonna live and what that experience is going to be like. Um, and so with that, I wanted to take a moment to kind of share a little bit about residence life and housing, especially for freshman students. Um, I've listed a lot of information here for everyone. Um, our freshman residence halls um, are Spencer, Woodson Memorial, and McClung. Um, and McClung, if uh, you can see there, I noted that NBCW, that is an all freshman um, female residence hall space for students who are part of the Mary Baldwin College for Women. Um, additionally, kind of talking about each of those buildings, they are all 
double and triple occupancy rooms with um, community style bathrooms on each floor. Um, that is pretty standard in most universities for freshman students um, and is what we offer at Mary Baldwin. Um, additionally, I wanted to touch on kind of the support and staffing that we have. Um, so every building um, has resident advisors, um, commonly known as RAs. Um, in the freshman communities, there's an RA on each floor. Um, their role is to be there to kind of help support students um, and provide programming opportunities um, and interact on a regular basis to kind of help be there, answer questions, help lead to resources, and just be a really great support for students. Um, and then additionally, policy enforcement, making sure that um, the community is in a good place and that everyone is kind of following um, policy and procedures so that that way it's a healthy and wonderful living environment. Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple things um, coming up is the housing application and roommate selection process. Um, the housing application um, is online and information will be shared out when it becomes available. Um, additionally, um, room assignments are scheduled and made over the summer um, and our goal is always to get that sent out um, hopefully late July, early August. Those will be emailed to students um, in their MBU email. Um, as we go through that process. So that was just a quick overview of kind of the residence life spaces that freshmen are living in. Um, and of course, if there's any questions, feel free to ask those. Um, and I think I'm going to be passing it back to Carly to kind of help with answering and responding to questions. Thank you. And thank you guys so much. Um, so it looks like we have a lot of questions coming in. Um, first, we will start with Tracy. Um, we seem to have a lot of questions about dining. Uh, so Tracy, do you work with individuals who have specific dietary needs? Yes, absolutely. Um, again, it's based on uh, having that relationship and, and understanding that we're there to help and serve. Um, you know, initially we uh, label our food, not with every single dietary restriction, but um, things like gluten-free um, and, and things of that nature, just to, to help them navigate through our offerings. And then our staff is also prepared to answer any questions before every meal. We have a pre-service meeting so that we're all aware of what's in the food. And then the other part of that is through menu planning, just understanding um, what the needs are and and you know how we lay out the menu and then also how we lay out the food on the bars so that people can build their options uh, according to the dietary restriction and not be limited to just one or two bars per meal. Great, thank you. And going off on that, then how would students purchase their meal plans? Yes, um, so choosing their meal plan will be part of the registration process um, online. So when they register for freshmen, they will have the choice of the unlimited meal plan or the fixed 21. Great, thank you. Now, Dr. Jeffries, um, this may be a question for you. If not, feel free to pass it off to one of your colleagues. When will students start registering for classes? Uh, I'm gonna ask Dr. Jones uh, if he could answer that question. Yeah, so a part of the onboarding process, um, students would get information on a pre-reg form. So the thing that, that is very distinct about Mary Baldwin is that we have our registration is centralized. So you will not have to worry about physically registering yourselves. You're going to fill out a pre-reg form that allows you to um, list your preferences on courses. Uh, and then our associate provost of student success, uh, Dr. Carrie Usher, uh, works with each student to build their schedule. Once that is built out and sent to you, then it will be um, academic advising sessions as needed if you want to uh, kind of revisit the schedule and make some changes. Great, thank you. Now, will there be a mandatory orientation before they attend? And that I'll give that to you as well, Dr. Jones. OK, uh, so yes, there will be an orientation experience that is expected for all first year students to participate in. Um, there's also I will extend that to new student days as well. I saw a question um, regarding that so I can 
um, put them together. Uh, New Student Day, which is in the summer, is like a pre-onboarding um, experience. Um, due to uh, the pandemic right now, we are um, transitioning that to more of a virtual experience and information about that would be shared uh, in the near future. Uh, but regarding orientation, yes, it's, it's designed to be an in-person um, experience. Hopefully all goes well. Um, that would be a week long in mid-August. Um, and so it is expected that everybody um, attend so they can get all of the information that they need um, to make a smooth transition into their first year. Thank you. Now, Sarah, when will students be moving in? Great question. Um, move in is currently scheduled for the end of August. Um, I don't have the exact dates in front of me. I apologize. Um, and if somebody does, they can feel free to share those. Um, but yeah, move in will be um, towards the end of August and um, right before we get started for the semester. Can students request roommates, Sarah? Yes, um, students can request roommates. So if there's someone else that is attending um, and joining the Mary Baldwin community um, on the through the application process, there will be an option to request a roommate. Um, we ask that each person request the opposite person in order to make it easier for us to kind of see those pairings and make that um, selection. But then we will do our best to honor those requests. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jeffries. Uh, we have a student who is saying that they are out of state. Um, they're wanting to know, is there a nearby health clinic for minor health concerns or emergencies for students to access? Uh, yes, actually there are several ur urgent cares in the area and we are less than five miles away from the largest health care provider in the area, Augusta Health. Thank you. Dr. Britton, is there a chapel on campus? Are religious services available? So there are many uh, churches in the general area and we do have a chaplain on campus that provides uh, different workshops and activities uh, a, a, as inclusive as possible. But the best thing to do would be to go ahead and to look up the different services that may be available literally within walking distance. There are churches within walking distance of, of many different types of denominations and faith stands. So. Great, thank you. Now, Dr. Britton, this could stay with you or Sarah. You can chime in as well. Um, a student is saying that they have an emotional support pet. Are they allowed to bring that on campus? Um, yes, I can answer that. Sorry. Um, uh, we do have an emotional support animal policy. There is an application and form um, that needs to be completed and filled out and reviewed by a committee. Um, and then that may change the adjustment of where you're living, though, based on where we can house whatever animal or pet that that is. Um, but it is an option. Um, you just need to fill that out and provide the correct information. And Sarah, if you wouldn't mind, why don't you give some examples of emotional support pets that we've had in the past, just so that the students know. Um, perfect. And um, we've not had a ton of emotional support animals. Primarily, we have only had um, cats and dogs that we have accommodated. Great, thank you. Dr. Britton, can you talk a little bit more about RISE? Do you need to apply to be in the RISE program? Yes, you do need to apply and applications are, are actually being worked on uh, in the next couple of weeks and that will get pushed out uh, probably sometime the end of May, beginning of June uh, with a, a deadline date. So we are limiting the number of students coming in because we really do want to make sure that we give as much support as possible to those students, uh, but, but there is no limitation as to who can apply other than that you are not involved with any other affinity group. Thank you. Dr. Jeffries, um, I know that this is uh, this is a, a big question um, that I'm sure you are thinking about uh, daily, uh, but would you mind addressing, you know, what our plan is for the fall as of right now with students? Um, and if if we are not on campus, what that will look like for students in a student engagement perspective? Well, 
you know, I, I would like to say this right now. Our plan is that we are going to be here in the fall. Um, and that's the way that we are moving forward at this point um, until we get, you know, further um, information that would have us to think otherwise. Uh, so that's probably the best way that I can answer that right now. Great, thank you for that. Um, I know we addressed it yesterday with Dr. Buckman and just wanted to make sure that those listening today um, were, were all on the same page. Yes. Um, Dr. Jones, I think this will be a good question for you. Um, what should students be doing after they deposit? Um, what kind of preparation steps should they be taking? Is there anything that they need to be doing after they pay their deposit? Yeah, so there's going to be information that'll come out when it comes down to the workflow of things that need to be turned in. So some of those things will include completing the housing application, uh, completing the pre-reg form for the courses, signing up for BAM, so our Baldwin Alert Messaging System, um, and also there's going to be information on new student days and that online platform that will be accessible to all students so that they can go and get more information on all of the resources. Uh, so that would be the first things to um, start to think about that when it comes down to the um, the functional things with the onboarding process. And then there are a lot of other things um, that may fall outside of a formal application process that we encourage all students to think about. So once they have their courses, uh, being able to look at online resources to get a head start. Um, right. Uh, so getting head on readings, uh, reaching out to their instructors that they have discovered on on their um, schedule, so on and so forth. So um, a lot more information is going to be coming within the next couple weeks. Great. Thank you. Um, now, Sarah, I see we have a few specific questions about dorms coming in. Um, specific questions about laundry in a dorm. How much does it cost? Are students allowed to have microwaves? Would you mind just going through, you know, um, that portion of what's in a dorm, um, what students can expect as far as laundry services in their dorm room, as well as what kind of things can they um, bring as far as um, micro fridges and all of that fun stuff? Sure, great, thank you. Um, so a couple of things. So each of the residence halls um, do have a common area like lounge and kitchen space. So you are able to um, prepare your own food. Um, there is a community refrigerator, community microwave um, to be able to use. Um, students are allowed to um, bring in mini fridges to their rooms. Um, two per room is the limit. Um, however, microwaves individually are not permitted. Um, however, we do do micro fridge rentals um, and that information will be sent out um, with all the new student information as to how to sign up for those. You can rent it. It's dropped off before you move in and it's picked up when you leave. It's kind of one less thing you have to worry about um, and it meets our requirements in terms of kind of um, power input and output. Um, laundry services are provided in each of the residence halls, um, varying numbers of washers and dryers depending on the size of the building. Um, laundry fees are included in um, your room and board costs. So when you go to do your laundry, it doesn't cost you anything. So you don't need to worry about bringing quarters and um, you know the machine eating your money or anything like that. Um, I'm trying to think there. Like I said, there's a common lounge um, with, you know, couches, big TV, things like that so that, you know, you guys can hang out with your friends and be in a space um, where you don't have to be kind of stuck in your room. Um, and I think that kind of hit on everything, Carly, that we were asking. If there's something I forgot, please let me know. No, that sounds perfect. Um, now I am going to call two people that are in this um, this session that have not been seen yet. Anthony Hammer, one of our admissions counselors um, here, and Kirsten Lazary, our associate director of admissions at Mary Baldwin. Um, would the both of you mind just chiming in and saying, you know, what you think students um, love most about Mary Baldwin and, and the kinds of things that students are telling you um, firsthand? Um, what's really engaging for them? Certainly, thank you, Carly. Um, 
As Carly had said, my name is Kirsten Lazary and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions. Um, I'm also an alum of Mary Baldwin and I think what we hear from students is that they enjoy the same things um, that, that I enjoyed, which is being so close to downtown. Um, downtown Stanton is just a beautiful neighborhood and it's really our, our front door. And so we're able to go to the local um, gelato spot. And as they had shared, um, we have events down there with our students doing um, movie night. So students really love to be a part of the community in the downtown area. And then our, our student board does a great job of putting on fun events and, and like they had said, the mixers are a wonderful opportunity. To just kind of let your hair down and enjoy your fellow students and bring uh, everybody together from freshmen to seniors. Great, thank you. Um, now, Anthony, if you wouldn't mind um, chiming in yourself. Sure. Um, so I'm Anthony Hammer. I'm one of the admissions counselors in the um, admissions office. I also work with transfer students. So if anyone has um, any kind of dual enrollment um, coursework or any college credits, I'm the person you can contact about that. Um, so being at Mary Baldwin for almost three years, I've worked with a lot of students who have um, really just enjoyed Mary Baldwin in the sense that we are a family. So all the time you'll see us using the hashtag MBU family. Um, on our Instagram and Facebook and things like that. We actually live out that mission. So when students come to Mary Baldwin, um, when they step on campus for the first time, um, they get to experience that family from that first day. So um, our professors go out of their way to make sure that students have what they need, um, whether it be looking for internship placements or they just need to get a little extra push to get them kind of over the hump of um, where they are in their in their coursework and all those kind of things. The professors go out of their way to do that. Our um, student engagement staff, of course, that's here on this call today, uh, go above and beyond to make sure that students have what they need um, and make sure that they are um, accommodated as well as accustomed to campus life. Um, coming from high school to college can be a little daunting and a little um, scary and homesickness is real, so our staff works well with them. But also, I've noticed that students from day one also enjoy getting involved. They just really dive into um, the experiences that Mary Baldwin has to offer them. Being that we are a small institution, um, there are tons and tons and tons of activities and um, things that students can get a part of from day one. Thank you so much, Anthony, and, and playing off of that um, things that students are able to be involved in. Um, Dr. Britton, would you mind talking to us a little bit about, um, I know we've, we've addressed a lot of our residential students. Would you mind talking a bit about, you know, opportunities for commuter students and um, activities that they can participate in on campus as well? Yes, so commuter students can participate in any activity uh, that happens through student life or through student activities. So they're involved with everything. Once you're a student, it doesn't matter whether you're a residential or commuter, you can you can participate in any activity that that we offer. So commuters are definitely wanting to be engaged. We want our student our commuter students to be engaged just as much as our residential students. And so what we have is that we have a commuter lounge. Uh, so students are able to go ahead. They get a key that allows them to go into the first floor of one of our residence halls. Um, and in that that uh, space. There is a commuter lounge uh, for commuters, just for commuters, that has a refrigerator there, that has a microwave there, it has some shelving. Um, if you need to put things on, uh, there's couches and tables. And so that's available for commuter students to use 24 hours a day as long as students are on campus. So the only time they can't come in, of course, is when the residence hall itself is closed, uh, you know, such as during this time or during a Christmas or, or a special break but they're available. Um, I mean, that lounge is available for those students to use because uh, we really want to make sure that that they don't feel like they're not part of the community. Um, and so uh, and that's a, it's an easy process to go ahead and get the keys. Uh, there's a form to fill out with campus safety that gets approved by me and uh, and we actually go through that during orientation. We have a special orientation just for commuters so that they know the type of transition that they're going to go through because it's a little bit different when you're going to classes and then trying to go home or trying to work uh, and then going home to do work versus you know going back to your residence hall. So we really want you to be uh, engaged and really want you to feel welcomed into the Mary Baldwin community. 
Great, thank you for that. Um, now this is going to be our last question of the session. Uh, Dr. Jones, I'll throw that over to you. Why should students choose Mary Baldwin? Yeah, I'd love to answer that. Um, so I talked a little earlier about the, the uniqueness about our campus and it being a very people-centered uh, institution. As a small uh, liberal arts college, not only do we um, have the holistic um, approach to education, um, but we really want people to feel valued, affirmed, and respected in this environment. Uh, we have a very diverse campus. Uh, we are uh, on a little over 50% students of color. So that adds a great dynamic when it comes down to how students are coming to us, the value that they bring and how it really uh, promotes that inclusivity um, and also the equity when it comes down to the campus offerings. I'll say also the faculty are top notch. Um, so if you're talking about faculty that actually care, right, and, and um, for some institutions, it can be um, that you're a number, right, and uh, the perspective is that the faculty don't care, but that is the total opposite um, here. Our students love our faculty, and we, we did uh, a survey about why students, what was so special about Mary Baldwin, and it was the people. It was the faculty and it was the overall sense of family. So if you want to feel a part of a family um, and feel the love that comes around when it comes to this environment, Mary Baldwin is the choice for you if that is what you value. Um, so that's definitely the proposition that we offer and that we deliver on a student centered, people centered experience that really values who you are, how you come to us. And there is effort and work put into you so that you can um, achieve all of your goals. I could not agree more. I absolutely love that. Um, so with all of this being said, thank you all so much um, for presenting today. We are going to be ending this session, but we have a Money Matters session coming up at 2 p.m. with our financial aid office. I hope you all will join us. To join in on this session, you must sign out of the session we're currently in and go back to your browser and use the direct link for the Money Matters session. Thank you all so much for joining and participating today um, and I will hopefully see you soon.